Hey folks, AJ here, and we got some fun stuff in. We are going to be doing a sound system install replacement for a church in Baltimore, and the stuff actually came in today. And this has been one thing that I've been saying I've been wanting to do, I don't know how long. Um, I was thinking once I hit a certain point in Patreon or YouTube, I was actually gonna buy one, but thankfully, we're gonna be doing this install and I can actually just use this. And that is playing and doing it in depth as much as I know, cause I don't know this stuff super, super deep. I'm just gonna take you along and try and go over some of the things that I haven't been able to find. And that is messing around with a, oh, oh what is it? X32. Yeah, so let me set this up <laughs> and see what we can do with it, all right? All right, you gotta love sweet water to give you candy when you get this stuff. And what a massive box. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yay, let me move this camera back some. Not as super professional as I normally would, but hey, this is about Trying to get y'all in. You can't see my head. Whew. All right, so we got this here. And this is mainly to replace a um, analog system at a church in Baltimore. And this is, I guess, getting them caught up, but ultimately I think this is gonna expand out into live streaming. But this is kind of one of those things like, hey, we we want to get into live streaming, but we know our sound is not the greatest. And let's go ahead and upgrade our board. So that is what this is. I have set up one of these at Fifth Street Baptist Church in my hometown. Great little board. And excellent deal at a... Uh, sweet water for this as well too. So we are getting a board that's gonna be in the back. It is gonna have a digital snake that's gonna go all the way to the front where everything is. And that's gonna connect all the mics and everything in the front. Have a shielded ethercon cable that's gonna go all the way to the back to connect the digital snake with this board. Oh. Fun, fun. Let's get all this unwrapped. And I'm gonna try and do a series of videos with this. Um, Obviously, I, it's not like I'm gonna have it forever because we have to schedule the time to get it installed. But just like I would with an ATEM, I wanna have this set up as much as possible so that when I get there, very few things would need to be adjusted, not the overall. So we're gonna look at making sure it's on the latest firmware, show you how to do that. I'm gonna connect it to my network, play around with the, the app that's on the, you can get on the computer or on a tablet and stuff like that. And I'm being very, very delicate with this. Hey, there's a pack of silica. Remember kids, don't play with that and don't eat it either. All right, let me take that off the stand here and let's take a quick little deep dive into this board. All right, so this is the Behringer X32 Compact. Um, I just assumed this because all the other ones are kind of hard to get. Um, everybody's using these, but hey, cool. So this can have 40 channels, I believe. 
No, 32. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, 32. Yeah, AJ. It says 32 right there. 32. Um, 32 here. And a lot of motorized faders here. You got your screen. You got all this other cool stuff. Let's go around the back here. Well, actually, let's go to the side. You got a, a headphone jack right there. And for a lot of people who ask me about who are hooking this up to an ATEM, they're like, what do you do? So, you know, well, first off, we got our monitor out. You could use this, um, but this is mainly, the monitor out is mainly meant for like speakers. If somebody's not using headphones and this is kind of like in a closed area, like in a media booth or something like that, you also have these RCA outs, which is an auxiliary out. You could use this. You can, that's the aux in, so you can connect the phone or something like that with this media player or something like that. Or the people who want to live stream, this has USB, so you can hook this up to a computer and this will give you audio out over USB, so you don't really even need any cables. You have another USB for remote control, Ethernet, we'll put it on the network. MIDI connections, you got your local 16 input, XLR inputs, eight outputs here. And you have this notice here, stop, always use a shielded cable with EthanCon connectors only. Now, I'll be honest, I have installed ones without and it's worked fine, but we do have EthanCon cables here, which makes it easier because it looks like an XLR connector, but it locks in place so you can't move it. Um, a -A um, AES EBU out. This is what the original ATEM television studio used to use like at my home church. Um, so you could have used that and connect that directly to that, but they don't make that board anymore. Um, so not a problem. You have your Ultranet. So this is where you can connect this to a personal mixer um, for your musicians and stuff like that. But actually my brother-in-law, they have the full version of this at their church and you can actually get an app as long as this is connected over the network, they can put the app on their phone or their device and then that will be their personal mixer. So that saves from you having to use that. Oh, all right. Anything on this side? Got another headphone jack on that side right there. So really straightforward. So let me go ahead and I think I got a cable long enough. Let's connect this to the network, get it powered up. And well, actually no, let me open up the other stuff that's over there which is gonna be the snake and the Ethicon, get that set up and then we'll power everything up. All right, here's the last piece. This is the digital snake here that we're gonna be using to connect everything. This is what's gonna sit in the front of the church and we're gonna connect this back. So again, just like on the back of here, we have 16 ins and eight outs. Now, technically you could marry these together and have devices connect to this, but then use this as well too. So you can have 32 actual connections here as well. So even though this has only 16 connections here, you can add the other 16 here and then expand off of that. All right. So if we flip this over, being very delicate, since I got one hand to do this, we went on the back here. And you see, we have the other end of the Ethercon will go there. We have a USB connection here, another Ultranet out, MIDI, and that's it. You got some um, spit-off connectors right there, optical right there. But yeah, so let's go ahead and connect this stuff up, give it some power. Oh, and there and there's the, sorry, my mess on the floor, um, the Ethercon cable. This was actually a bundle deal that came with... Um, at Sweetwater, which was cool because I was going to have to get this stuff separately. But the only compromise was that's 50 feet less than the 200 I was originally thinking. But we can always switch that out if it's not long enough when we get to install. And that's not a big thing to do. We can configure all of this and just get a longer cable if need be. Um, but also, there's a store up in Baltimore. I can actually go and get that if need be. But anyway. I digress. Let's get this powered up and let's see what it looks like with everything turned on. All righty, we got everything plugged in and connected. We got the EtherCon connected to the X32 Compact. 
Um, I only un unraveled just a little bit of that. And I actually think I have the most recent, well, not most recent, I have a version of the firmware on here. This was equivalent to the one that we did at Union Grove. But anyway, let's power everything up. And I really need to clean uh, my stuff out here. But like I said, I'm running out of space. Some of these toys are getting very massive, so it's kind of hard <laughs> to find space for everything. So the first thing we're going to do, let me take you off this here. We're going to go check out what the current firmware is, and then we're going to look it up and see what we need to do. Also, I have it connected to my network here. So let's see. This looks like a pretty recent version based off of what I remember from um, Union Grove. But let's go over here to utility here. Gonna press our page over here to go to config, gate, dynamic, EQ, sends, main. And that's not what I was looking for. I need to go to setup. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're on version 4.06, all right. Now let's go over, config, ignoring that, remote, ignoring that for right now. I'm gonna go to network and we wanna see, we are getting the IP address, we are set up as DHCP, so that's good. The clock says it's 2.59, it's actually 3.01 but I'm going to trust this since it's probably pulling from the network instead. And I was looking at the oven, which I had to set. So that part is fine. Name, strips, icon, all that stuff. That stuff we're going to configure. Cards. So it's registering the USB card there. Okay. That part is good. So let's go ahead and go over and look up Behringer's site and see what version of software it is. And if it is, we'll walk through the setup. All right, folks. So we went over to the system here and that is the latest software firmware that's on the board. So that's cool. So what I have right here is the Windows X32 edit program that you could use to connect. And like I said, we're on the network. So let me close it so we can show you how it goes in there again. Where did I put that? Yeah, I put it on the USB for me to take with me. So small executable here, 15 megabytes. All right, I'm just gonna say cancel. So it just opens up right here, but because we're on the network and this would work the same way if it was connected over USB, we're gonna go over here to setup here. Why did it jump over to that screen? And it's picking up the board and it tells us the version, all this other good stuff. We do connect. I could set this up to auto connect. I'm probably gonna do that on their software, auto sync, all this other stuff. We're just gonna connect. Do I want to sync it from the mixer to the PC or the PC to the mixer? So you like, you can make adjustments to this and send it there. I'm gonna do from the mixer to the PC. And boom, now we're connected. So say I'm gonna go here to channel number four. I'm gonna slide that fader all the way up here. Now let's go over and look at that. That fader slid up. So let me do number six here and there you go so it's in sync um so obviously there are motors there so that part is cool so now let's start configuring some stuff now again i'm obviously going to have to redo this when i'm there but again i'm learning this at the same time as y'all oh the other thing i didn't show you it's actually picking up that the snake is connected here so we're gonna have to go through and figure out how that's gonna go. So my intention is there is my roadcaster with how I have my mics and everything set up. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect all of this and I'm gonna switch over from this over the shoulder type of thing and I'm gonna use record directly through that um, into my ATEM and everything like that um, initially. So let me move this stuff over here and we'll go from there.
All right, so we got this set up. I have my desktop and everything set up so that we can have everything still in place here. So let's go ahead and power this up. Now I am not connected to anything right now. I am still recording um, through my Behringer for right now. Um, but ultimately what we're gonna do is connect this to the ATEM as well. All right, so we got it set up here. We're on our desktop here. So let's reconnect since we're back on here. Let's sync it again. All right, so the main thing, what we wanna do is do something really, really simple. We just wanna be able to connect one mic. And you see it saved all my settings in here. So I'm sliding these down here. Um, what we wanna do is just connect one simple mic to this and get a reading. So I have my other, my daughter's um, podcaster mic. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that up and let's see if we get a reading here on channel one. All right, so we have the mic connected. And I'm hooking my headphones up because I don't have any speakers, so there's no way for you to hear what's going on. At least for right now, because I don't have it connected to our system. All right, so I have my headphones plugged in. Now, we're not getting anything here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to, go over here to our channel number, our channel number one here. And maybe I should have had another mic so I can reach over here, but um, we have it plugged into channel number one. Let's go ahead and slide this up here and do we get anything testing one two three testing no we don't so oh, let me turn the main up let's see we should be getting something but we're not so process of elimination here Let's go ahead and see how this is set up. So we're gonna go back over here to channel number one. Let's do an edit. No, that's not it. Huh. All right, channel. All right, we're channel number one. This mic does not need phantom power. The main thing is we wanna just see if we're getting a reading from it. Um, so in here, we can do a stereo link. This is what this is. So that's if you had something coming in at the left and right channel, you could link this to number two by default. So now when I slide one, they both slide at the same time um, here, but we're not, we don't need that. But that's good to know. Um, like I said, if we needed phantom power on it, we can turn it on. So you're seeing something there, but it's really, really, really low. Um, let's turn the gain up to about, I don't know, 20. All right, there we go. We are seeing something now. So we're getting some activity. These mics do not require power, um, but as you can see, it's good. We're getting something here. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so, um, so the game was really low. Okay, so that's what we're playing around. Realize also, faders and gain are something completely different. Let's set this at zero. And, I don't know, let's set the gain to... 30. Gain is kind of the way I was taught is how far away you can be from a mic or to pick you up. So if you had those people in church that want to hold a mic at their belly button, you turn the gain up so it can cover that distance. Um, but you got to be careful because if it's too high, it can reach out and touch a speaker and you'll get a nice squeaking sound. All right. So there we go. Now I'm going to turn my headphone volume up. And I'm still not hearing anything. So let's see. What else are we missing here? 
it's on our main out. So I'm not exactly sure why that would be. Hmm. All right, let's go over here to our main. And, okay, we have... We're, stuff is going to the main out. Then why am I not getting anything? Hold on. Let's, let's do some common sense stuff. What's the volume set on the headphones? That, that might be a good thing to test. All right. There we go. My volume was <laughs> down on the headphones. So we're here. Um, you can probably see now that we are getting some action lit up here on our screen here. I don't think you can see it because of that angle. Maybe I should turn this for this camera to pick it up a lot better. But hopefully you can see the levels there coming through. Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. All right, so that's good. So, cool. So I wonder, can I connect this now so that y'all can hear what's going on? Um, and I hope y'all would know, this is really obvious, <laughs> that this is this is... I mean, I've set this up, but not going in depth like this because I'm learning at the same time. All right, so let's go to our. Configure. But I don't want it for that. I was always taught by a guy who does this professionally that the um, connecting it to your tablet and going through that interface makes it a lot easier. But we'll see. And I just resized it, not realizing what it was. Oh, we made it a little bit bigger, easier to read. All right, so what the main thing we want to do is see where we can output, do our outputs. Um, so that's 1 through 32. We can scroll over. There's all our 32 channels. DCA. Our aux ends, here's our left and right USB. That's if we plug something in right there. All right. Um, what else, what else, what else? Um, and let me shrink this a little bit because I'm my picture in picture is blocking it. Well, let's go back to our regular size here. All right, we need to find our outputs. It's not that one, it's the config. Oh, routing, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> oh man. All right, so in our routing, we're routing how our ins and outs, our auxes and all that other stuff goes. So we have devices connected, we're not using that right now, but right now we see from our inputs, this is locally, this is the actual device on the back. How is this being handled? Maybe I should look at that camera. I think that one will actually be better here. And let's turn off that picture and picture here. So in this, the routing is out of all the inputs that go on the back of this, how are they gonna be routed to what? So you can route input number one from here to the line in from here, or you can route it from the digital snake to here. It all depends on how you want to set this up. So really cool, um, but that's what this part of the software is. What I was <laughs> stumbling about trying to find, that is. All right, so right here on the back, we only have 16 inputs on the back of this. So right now it's saying channels one through eight are one through eight on the back of this device. Channels nine through 16 are routed and connected to the nine and 16 inputs on this device. 
if there were actually 32 inputs on here, we would say, oh, channel 17 through 24 are on the physical device local as well as 32. Now that would mean it's looking at every single input for the stuff back here, but we're not going to do that. So from here, what it originally was saying is inputs 17 to 24 are routed to inputs one through eight on the AES 50 a or the digital snake. The first one that's connected to our Ajax um, through the ethercon. So 17 to 18 on the board is represented by one through eight on the snake. And then 25 through 32 is actually inputs nine through 16 there. So let's give a um, scenario. If there's nothing that's connected to this board when we install it at the church, there's really no reason to use any inputs on the back of here. Everything will be the snake. So how that would work would actually be, hey, let me use um, 1 through 16 on the back of this. It's actually 17 to 32. And 1 through 8 and 9 through 6 is actually, um, hold on, is actually on here. Hold on, am I messing this up? Did I have it backwards? You know, the channels, which is on here, one through this is on EAS. That's right. Okay, I'm sorry. I got it right. <laughs> I was clicking wrong. So inputs on the back of here are 1 through 16. The physical connections on the X32 Compact are routed to channel 17 through 32 in the software. All right. So let's just leave it at that for right now, just to make it easy. So we have slider number one here. So we're connected. Remember, we just changed this mic that's connected is now technically input number 17. And as you can see, 17 right here is where the activity is going on the board right here. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Hope it makes sense to me too, <laughs> but it makes sense. See, I'm one of those physical learners that I have to talk and actually do it at the same time. So we routed inputs 17 to 32 to be the actual ports on this device. All right, so that's good. So now let's go over here and do our auxiliary out. The auxes out right now are configured to inputs. So in other words, we have multiple inputs right now, but we don't necessarily want to do that. Let's actually, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go to our outs because that's what we were originally trying to do right now. So out of the eight outputs on the back, Yeah, just make sure you got it. The eight outputs on the back right now are saying the direct outs are these. So what we're going to say is um, the output is right here, which is actually seven and eight which are the last two, that would be our main house out. Um, but we can have other ones do the same thing. So let's say, mm, let's do number one and number two would be the exact same thing. All right. So that would be the output that's coming out from jacks one and two would be the output. Or, I mean, you know what? Let's do this slowly. Let me um, get a cable to connect from outputs 7 and 8, and I'm going to connect that to our system, and that way we can hear what's going on. All right, folks. So we got um, – I'm in a new shirt because I got an appointment here in a little bit. But um, I want to finish this off by just tweaking this and connecting so we can get audio out from the board into – 
my um, roadcaster so y'all can actually hear what's going on. So let's go back over here to our routing. And I, the only cable I have on me is from a quarter, dual quarter inch to 3.5. That's what I have connected to the phone input on the roadcaster. So let me turn the volume up on that first. All right, so I actually already have, I'm getting a reading from it already. So good, nothing is coming out, but so we have to configure this. So we're using our aux out. I am using seven and eight. Actually, I'm glad I looked. I'm using four and five <laughs> instead. So we're gonna go to our aux out and we're gonna go to four and five. And these are configured right now for inputs, but we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna set our four to the left main output and the right to main output, all right? So now, if we tap on this, we should get some type of, and I do, I see it right there. So I'm gonna stop here talking in this mic and I'm gonna talk solely through this mic now. So, this is now pulling in audio directly from this system. Um, the, so we're bringing in our audio through the X32, which is going out from the aux four and five that's going into my roadcaster. Now, yes, I could, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm recording my audio to the roadcaster. Instead of me connecting it to the roadcaster, just imagine this would be me connecting it to the ATEM, and that would give you one way. So again, that is um, XLR, that's not XLR, but that's um, quarter inch dual, dual quarter inches to a 3.5 that would be going into the ATEM. We also could have used the RCA out and configured that to go into the ATEM, or we could have used the um, XLR out and go into it. So you have multiple options. So that's just this one. So um, I think I've stumbled enough to infuriate enough people here. Um, let's do one last thing. And that is I actually hooked up the snake and moved it over here. It's right over here on the table right off camera. You can't see it. So it is, let's mute this right now. It's over here to the left. You see it right there on the side of the screen. So what we're gonna do is come back here into the software and we're gonna change our input to say that our input is coming from that, which technically we've already done because we said inputs one through 16 are coming from here. So let me go ahead, disconnect disconnect the mic from the back of this and connect it to um, any of the inputs on the snake and we should see activity on the line. All right, I'm connected to number one. But we're not, not seeing anything yet. Let's make sure we got everything straight here. We're still saying we're getting a red light here on the S16. Let's make sure we have that connected. Now it's saying here that that input is wrong.
All right, there we go. So I think what happened is the it was set to forty four point one, and I have the board set to forty eight. I, I mean, I didn't change that. That's how it was natively set up. So I don't know. So see right here, the sample rate was at forty eight kilohertz, but the snake was set to forty four point one. I don't know what that is all about. Um, let's go ahead and set it back to internal and see I need to read up on this um, the synchronization I just know how I got this to work at the other churches I set the clock to be what that is so if we alright so we're connected to number one we're still getting a red light on here to saying there's an issue here um, in the software let's go back here and let's say we're going to synchronize with that clock so now everything shows green. But I'm not seeing any audio there. So let's go ahead and make sure we check this again. Let's go to routing, inputs, one through eight are coming from that. You're saying it's detected. Why? Huh. Let's switch these around and just see if we get anything different. Now, it could be that our gain is down as before. So, this would be input number 17. Let's go to channel. Let's turn our gain up to 30. And there it is. So we already get something there. All right. So let's turn that up a little bit to zero. So there we are. We have our inputs going through. The gain was just low. So now let's go back and route these again. So we're going to say local is actually going to be 17 and 32 and then 1 through 16 is going to be the snake so now we're on input number one so if we look back on our software here there's channel number one which is coming from the mic that I'm tapping here that is going through the snake. Snake is going over the Ethercon into the X32, and the X32 is considering jack number one on the digital snake as input channel number one on the board. Whew. So, <laughs> um, a lot to wrap your mind around. So, um, we're going to be playing around with this. Um, let me know, is this helpful at all? Um, cause like, again, it could just be me. It could be, I'm doing these just for me of all I know. And all of y'all know this stuff, but I'm being very transparent. I don't know this stuff. So, um, in detail, I know enough to have it set up, but going deep diving and stuff like this. Um, when I set this up the first time I actually had, um, my friend Kyle, his cousin actually does this professionally. So I had him on the phone um, and he was <laughs> talking me through this. So this is me reverse engineering, trying to figure this stuff out and documenting it for y'all. So um, that's about it. Um, let me know if there's any other thing that y'all want me to talk about. Um, mainly, this is going to be me documenting this for myself, um, as well as anybody else and the other ministry on how to set this up. We're going to start getting into changing the labels, the icons, and all this other stuff, making a main mix, and then we're going to have a secondary mix sent for the live stream, because right now it's set that no matter what is going on, that um, is going to be the same thing that goes out. But we might want to make some adjustments, do some matrixes and buses and all these other stuff like that. Um, we're going to try and go down that path. But um, let me know. And I am kind of on a time constraint because this has to go to a ministry. 
So I'm going to try and knock out as much as possible. So let me know if you have any other questions. So if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I'm keeping all the flubs in, folks. <laughs> so, um, you know, except for me walking past the camera and stuff like that, I'm going to try and keep all this stuff in just to show you, hey, being real, I don't want to just edit it to make make it seem like everything is perfect every time when it gets touched. But, you know, because I have issues with my stuff as well, too. So hopefully that helps. This is AJ, folks. We'll catch you in the next video. Later. <laughs>